Hello and welcome to tutorial number 10, part 1. My name is Eamon Killian. I've been doing a series of tutorials on how to get going with uh, IBM software. And I've had an inbound request again, uh, a bit like the VNC one uh, of an earlier tutorial. I've had a customer come through with a request to uh, learn a bit more about how to use Docker with software. Um, so that's what we're going to cover today. This is going to be quite a deep tutorial in some ways. It's going to get fairly technical, this one. Um, so I thought I'd lead into it with a bit of an introduction to what Docker is and what I'm actually going to cover today so that you can then trace through or track through on the videos uh, how I've actually done things and in what order. So I guess first up, you know, what is Docker? Um, why would I use it? Well, Docker is containerization, for one of a better um, description rather than virtualization. So what do I mean by that? Well, there's lots of documentation out there and, and I'm going to give some uh, links in the end to learn much more. So I'm by no means a Docker expert and again it's one of those occasions where I am definitely standing on the shoulders of giants. Um, but what is it? Well, virtualization world, hardware, you have your processors, your memory, etc. And then on top of that, you put a, a host operating system, which has its own binaries, uh, the actual executables that run instructions, and its own libraries. And on top of that, we install tools, in this case a hypervisor, that allows us to virtualize that hardware, to share that hardware across multiple different operating systems, which are then placed on top of the hypervisor. So you, you have a hardware with its operating system and the hypervisor, and on top of that, we install guest operating systems. Um, in this case, I've shown two, could be more, could be up to 50, even 100, depending on the size of the virtual machines and the size of the underlying hardware here. Um, and within those guest operating systems, they will have their own binaries and their own libraries and then on top of that you will put your applications. So you could take this entire section here that I'm putting my mouse around and you could bundle that up, package that up as a virtual machine and move it around to different um, to other different hardwares so long as you can sit it on this whatever hypervisor you took. So a good example would be vMotion in VMware. You could take this package, this actual image here, as a VMDK and vMotion it around different machines. Docker takes a different approach because this is very good and really, really useful um, and has been fantastic over the last probably five years has seen a real surge in the use of virtual machines and the ability to migrate virtual machines around with fantastic tooling like Vagrant and Puppet and Chef all coming to the fore so that it makes it much more usable. Docker takes a different approach. Rather than virtualizing the entire thing, it actually says, well, you know what? We've got the hardware and the host operating system. Wouldn't it be good if we could share the binaries and the libraries so that we don't need an entire operating system or indeed a hypervisor which impacts the performance of the, the underlying hardware. So Docker's approach when you install Docker on the host operating system it means you can then create images that have just enough of the binaries and libraries to run the application that you want to run and then you can run many, many of these, I've just shown two here, many, many of these um, Docker images on the underlying hardware. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, it is much quicker, much, much faster. Um, there's far less overhead. And once you get used to using Docker, and hopefully through these tutorials, you'll see how I'm using it and how quick it is to get things going. Um, Restarts, well, I've put the exclamation mark here. I mean, it's essentially a single line command and bang, it's done. Um, it takes seconds to get these images up and running on Docker. Um, and the whole tutorial set, um, probably end up being three parts this, is set up to really help you visualize the portability of using Docker. Um, 
to move these images around. So what are we actually going to do? Well, we're going to build a bare metal server, install Docker, pull some pre-built images from the Docker registry hub, run those, test them, make sure they're working. That's all on software. Then we're going to move back to my Mac. I'm going to build a new clean CentOS 6.5 virtual machine on my Mac in VirtualBox. I'm going to write a very like five line Node.js application and then we're going to create a Docker file on my Mac. We're going to run that Docker image on my Mac um, and we're going to run that within the VirtualBox VM and we're going to test our Node.js application. So it's going to be our app running in a Docker custom image running on VirtualBox, running on Mac. And then we're going to take that Docker image and we're going to send it to software, to our bare metal server where we started. And we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to spin that Docker image up on our software bare metal server and we're going to test our Node.js application. And this really reveals the portability of being able to move Docker images around like that and fire off our application. I mean, in this instance, it's going to be a, like a five, ten line application. But that could be an intricate full web app or full app app. It um, doesn't necessarily need to be a web app. Um, and that shows how powerful Docker is at helping you move these things around. To get more help on Docker, I mean, there's lots out there. I would definitely recommend Solomon Hikes, uh, the creator, uh, his introduction to Docker on YouTube, uh, the Docker site itself, the Docker document site, the hub registry where you should know about this. This is where pre-built uh, Docker images are kept. Um, and then, of course, Docker on GitHub where there are some extra tutorials as well. Finally, there's the Docker book. Uh, go and buy the Docker book. I think it was four or five quid on... Um, on um, Amazon, uh, iBooks, and Google. So I've provided those links there. I guess that's it for what I'm going to cover. So, well, let's get to it. Let's dive into some tech here and start creating uh, the software uh, bare metal machine. So as I said, let's dive in and let's start uh, with step one. Create the bare metal server. So I've already created one, but I just wanted to very quickly touch on how you do it. So once you've logged in to software into the customer portal, or indeed you could use the command line like tutorial nine uh, and just order one, but for simplicity, I'll show you in the customer portal here. Click on order devices. So all I've done so far is click on order devices. I've gone for an hourly bare metal server one of the key uniques of using IBM software is that you can order an hourly bare metal server. That's asking me to log on again, so I'm just going to quickly do that while it's out of shot. Okay, it's just logging in now. And once you've logged in, you will get a page like this. So I went for just a small one because we're only doing a quick demo here. Um, there's many, many choices available. Uh, but right now, I'll just go for an hourly single processor with four cores and eight gig of RAM. So you click on that. That will take you to the ordering page. We want one server. I selected Amsterdam. Everything else was fine. I selected CentOS 64-bit because that's what I've stuck with all the way along here. And I had one terabyte of SATA disk. And that was it. Continue. Lastly, we want to give it a host name. Um, if I remember rightly, yeah, I called it Satisfy4. So it's just verified the order. And then we fill in the host name. So all I did was Satisfy4. I stuck with softlayer.com. I clicked to accept the terms and finalize my order. And that was it. So it's that easy again in software to create a bare metal server. And the reason I did it earlier, so I'm gonna kill that now, was I wanted to have access to it for these videos very quickly. So about five hours ago, I got this thing going. So if we now click on that machine, we can then 
find the root password which will be in here and once we have our root password we can go and access it so I'm going to come out of the portal now we probably won't need the portal again uh, for the rest of this video so let's get into a new terminal window again for sheer simplicity I haven't started my array networks up um, so once again I need to go back and also get the IP address so I'm going to go in on the public IP address just for simplicity's sake and I'm going to SSH in there Oops, of course it's not in my cache anymore. The IP address is. So that's fine, and we're in. Okay. I'm just going to change the password to something I'll remember. Um, and it's bad, yes. Um, so at least now we're in. That's it. It's a clean install of CentOS. Now I'm going to get on with the next phases. So... Again, I'm going to just shortly pause the video to make sure I've got everything in place uh, so that I don't stutter through the next section. Okay, so I've logged in. Um, we're in as root. I've changed the password, as we saw in just a second ago. Um, let's install Docker. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to... Do a yum update there shouldn't be anything to update yeah that's what i expected because it's a brand new clean install so uh first thing we're going to need because this is centos 6.5 you don't need to do this step i believe in centos 7 um but that's very new so i'm more used to 6.5 which is why i've stuck to it during these tutorials um we need to install the actual extra packages uh, for Enterprise Linux, or EPEL, um, which are a release maintained separately to the CentOS release. So we're just going to add that, lovely, and then it's as simple as yum install uh, docker io. I think in CentOS 7 it'll just be yum install docker. But for this, it's the Docker IO. That's it. Docker's on there. We have Docker. Um, if I now do Docker images, okay, so it's not actually running yet. That's fine. So let's do a service start Docker. Oh, sorry. Syntax Docker start. Give that a second. Okay, Docker images. Okay, the Docker minus D is not running on this house. Oh, okay, let's run it in the background. There we go. We have no images on there. So let's pull down an image. Um, let's Docker pull. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to show you where these are kept if I bring up a brand new Chrome window and if we go to uh, docker hub registry there we go there are images in here and when you actually so for Ubuntu for instance when you click on there it will tell you just issue this command to pull this repository down from uh, the internet, which is fine. Um, so for instance, we can, yeah, yeah, hey, why not? Let's pull down Ubuntu. There'll be a few of these, so that's gonna take a couple of seconds, you know, probably about 30, 40 seconds for that to run, because there's a few different versions of it. Um, but this is a good, a good show off, really, for uh, the portability of Docker. These are, Ubuntu images of Docker. So I'm going to just pause there and then we'll come back to it. <laughs> 